Pablo Hidalgo's latest book, titled Star Wars Fascinating Facts, which came out on October 13th of this year, has been making the rounds, specifically the information about an Episode 8 treatment that George Lucas left behind in 2012. Quote, Luke Skywalker's destiny. Years before The Last Jedi began development, the treatment left behind by George Lucas in 2012 also had Episode 8 be the one wherein Luke Skywalker would die. Close quote. We've known a lot of this stuff for a while now, but this might actually be the first mention of a Luke Skywalker death, but we've known how George Lucas was going to present Luke Skywalker in his vision of the sequel trilogy, a recluse, a Colonel Kurtz comparison from Apocalypse Now. He's lost his way. That was George's idea. And we've known that for a while because of information like this. Phil Sostak, Lucasfilm creative art manager and author of The Art of the Last Jedi, among other books, revealed in 2017 that the origin of the Luke Skywalker we see in The Last Jedi began as an idea from 2012. Quote, So, the late 2012 idea of a Luke Skywalker haunted by the betrayal of one of his students in self-imposed exile and spiritually in a dark place not only precedes Ryan Johnson's involvement in Star Wars, but J.J. Abrams's as well. Close quote. Now let's jump back to Pablo Hidalgo's book. Quote, Ray was on a mission to seek out Luke Skywalker who had disappeared. As described by George Lucas, Ray is like Willard going up river seeking out Colonel Kurtz, an allusion to Apocalypse Now. The story had Rey find Luke on a Jedi Temple planet, but he is a recluse, withdrawn into a very dark space, and needs to be drawn back from despair." Close quote. In Phil Sostak's The Art of the Last Jedi from 2017, he also compares George Lucas' vision of Luke Skywalker to Apocalypse Now's Colonel Kurtz. Older, exiled, a recluse, losing his way, all that stuff. Concept artist Christian Alsman created this concept painting of Luke Skywalker from January 2013. He posted it on Instagram and said, quote, My first image I made for Star Wars The Force Awakens. This was January of 2013. Luke was being described as Colonel Kurtz, type hiding from the world in a cave. I couldn't believe I was getting to make this image, and I got a George Fabuloso on it to boot. Close quote. Pablo Hidalgo's book even mentions this concept art. Quote, Lucas approved one striking piece by Christian Alsman that embodied this incarnation of Luke. Close quote. Colonel Kurtz, Colonel Kurtz, Colonel Kurtz. Here's a little history timeline for you. George Lucas decided to make a new trilogy writing some quick treatments for episodes 7, 8, and 9. He approached Kathleen Kennedy in early 2012. Both of them then approached Michael Art in May of 2012 about writing a new trilogy. This was before Disney acquired the franchise. Kathleen Kennedy was then announced to be co-chair of Lucasfilm in June of 2012. Disney then buys Lucasfilm a few months later in October of 2012. Kathleen Kennedy is then announced as the new president of Lucasfilm, and around that same time, Michael Arndt turned in the 50-ish page treatment for the new Star Wars trilogy, which CEO Bob Iger called a, quote, pretty extensive and detailed treatment for what would be the next three movies, the trilogy, close quote. Now let's quickly jump back to Pablo Hidalgo's book real fast, AKA Ray, quote, the Force Awakens long journey from idea to finished film was filled with evolution, but one idea that remained constant from the start was that of a young woman's quest to become a Jedi Knight. In George Lucas's original outline, she was a 14-year-old girl named Taryn. In his subsequent iterations, she would briefly be named Faye and believe it or not, Winky. When writer-director J.J. Abrams came aboard, he simplified the names to placeholders. Kylo Ren was the Jedi killer, Faye became Sally, Finn was called Harry, and the character that would be Poe was John Doe. As the film neared production, Sally became Kira, then Echo, and finally Rey. Close quote. There's no question that what we got was probably, definitely, way different than what George's original treatments were like, right? 
things change. It's not surprising. The franchise literally changed hands. There's no question that most of Georgia's big and small ideas were changed or outright thrown aside. But it's also safe to say that some of his ideas did show up. There's no question that some of his ideas were adopted to what would ultimately become the sequel trilogy. And what's really interesting to me is that it seems like the idea that has caused the most controversy or anger or whatever you want to call it among fans was actually George's idea. Luke Skywalker, a recluse, lost. Colonel Kurtz, in despair, haunted by a student who betrayed him in self-imposed isolation. This was George Lucas's idea. And since my first review of The Last Jedi in 2017, I have expressed how much I loved the way Luke Skywalker was presented in that movie. And it was Lucas's idea. And we've known that for a few years now. So the narrative that's been dripping like a diarrhea ass over the past few years that this guy somehow assassinated the character of Luke Skywalker is dumb and false. We've known this for a few years. I mean, this is a, a great example of somebody just being a punching bag for a bunch of people who didn't like a thing. I mean, it's, it's blatant. But Lucas would have done it different. Cool, man. Cool. Just keep kicking that can down the road. You've created a little impenetrable, unwavering dream world of anger, like the dreams of Cody Sunchild. George Lucas has talked briefly and, and loosely about the treatments he handed over. Not too much is known, but what we know is he talked about a grizzled Luke Skywalker training a Padawan named Kira and how it would have gone deeper into the world of Metachlorians. And then we get a little more insight through Bob Iger in his memoir, and he expresses regret for how the transfer was handled. Quote, George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything, but he thought that our buying the story treatments was a tacit promise that we'd follow them. And he was disappointed that his story was being discarded. I'd be so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way. And I didn't think I had now, but I could have handled it better. Now, in the first meeting with him about the future of Star Wars, George felt betrayed. And while the whole process would never have been easy for him, we'd gotten off to an unnecessarily rocky start." Close quote. It's a shame that things ended up this way. It's a shame that Lucas seemed to have left with a sour taste in his mouth. It sucks. I'm not saying that the fact that Disney didn't fully use his treatment sucks. I mean, they were never obligated to do so. It doesn't really bother me, you know? I don't know why, it just doesn't. But it sucks. It sucks that, as Iger said, things got off to an unnecessarily rocky start. It just does. It sucks. But yeah, hey, everything we know all the quotes, all the concept art, all the information, it seems like the Luke Skywalker that we got in TLJ specifically was pretty damn close to the Luke Skywalker that was originally dreamed up by George Lucas. And maybe those treatments will eventually be released as some kind of collector's edition coffee table book. I'd love that. I would instantly add that to my cart. Wouldn't you?